Hello YouTube, welcome to Made It, where we are constantly trying to make medical lectures easier for you. Today we'll be talking about gypsum products, which is one of the most widely used material in dentistry as well as in medicine. And it's an important topic from exam point of view too, especially for the BDS students. So hoping this would be a helpful one. Stay with us till the end of the video. Before starting with the introduction to gypsum and gypsum products, I want to ask you all a question. What's the chemical formula for plaster of Paris or gypsum? Calcium sulfate dihydrate or CS4.2H2O, also called as gypsum, is a mineral which previously was found in mines around the city of Paris. So it's also called as plaster of Paris, but it's a misnomer now as gypsum is mined in many parts of the world and it's also an industrial byproduct. The mineral gypsum is usually white to yellowish white in color, so it's often called as white cement. But the term cement in dentistry implies some other material which has a different use. So don't confuse within these two terms, cement and gypsum. For centuries, gypsum has been used for construction purposes and for making statues. The products of gypsum are widely used in dentistry. And besides dentistry, gypsum is also used for splintering fractured bones in medicine. Gypsum products are supplied in a wide variety of forms. It's available in market as pre-weighed sachets, in medium-sized containers, or in large bags or sacks. So you need to know these basic terminologies before understanding that gypsum product has a wide use in dentistry in the making of various materials as a part of patient's treatment plan or for study purposes. An impression is taken using an impression material that's filled in a tray as you can see in that procedure being performed. And in the photograph, the impression of the maxillary arch of the patient is being taken. So impression is the negative likeliness or copy of the structure of an object, for example the imprint of teeth or other oral tissues for use in dentistry. Now we have the impression of the patient's mouth and we pour the plaster mixture in the impression which is a process called as casting. After the plaster sets, we obtain a positive replica of the oral cavity of the patient which can either be used for sturdy purpose or for working on it so as to make a dental appliance. Now that positive replica obtained by the setting of the plaster is called as cast and the same cast when used for sturdy purposes is called as model. Similarly, if we wish to replicate a single tooth, we take the impression of a single tooth and produce a dye by pouring plaster in the same way as I had explained above. So dye is the positive replica of a single tooth rather than the whole arch or the oral tissues. The term investing in dentistry implies covering or enveloping any object. So dental investment is the material that is used to cover or envelop whole or some part of an object so as to produce its replica on that material which is used for investing. So we should make sure that the investment material has enough strength such that it does not crack and proper impression of the object is produced. Now let's talk briefly about how gypsum products are produced. While studying about dental materials, you'll come across terminologies like calcination, roasting, and so on quite a lot. Calcination basically means exposing any material to strong heat such that it gets desiccated, which means the moisture or the water molecules are removed. Gypsum products are nothing but the derivatives of gypsum and are produced by calcining gypsum. Commercially in factories, the gypsum is first of all ground and converted into powdered form and subjected to temperatures of 110 to 130 degrees Celsius, which produces plaster of Paris or dental plaster. As the temperature is further raised, it's converted into an anhydride, literally meaning that it lacks water. So this is all when you heat gypsum 
in a dry environment. But what would happen if you heat the gypsum in a wet environment? When gypsum is heated in a wet environment or in the presence of steam, a crystalline alpha hemihydrate called as dental stone is formed. And talking about the microstructure of it, the crystals are in the form of rods or prisms, whereas dental plaster, also called as beta hemihydrate, is characterized by the sponginess and irregular shape and are porous. The dental plaster has weak strength than the dental stone. Now there is a next modification too which produces a modified alpha hemihydrate or a dye stone. If the calcination process occurs under pressure in presence of 30% calcium chloride or 1% sodium succinate solution, then the resulting hemihydrate crystals will be shorter and thicker than those produced plainly by wet calcination in a closed container or in the presence of steam let's say. And the product is called as the modified alpha hemihydrate or a dye stone. So basically it's a wet calcination itself but the product obtained is different due to different chemicals used and hence it's called a modified alpha hemihydrate or a modified dental stone since dental stone means alpha hemihydrate right so to sum up the process first of all we have the gypsum that is mined from the ores right and we have them in the solid form so they are converted into powder form by using machineries and then the powder form are heated uh, or subjected to heat in 110 to 130 degrees celsius in a dry environment which is called as a dry calcination and we obtain a beta hemihydrate or a dental plaster by the process of dry calcination but when the calcination is occurring in process in the presence of steam then it's called a weight calcination and the product of weight calcination is alpha hemihydrate right that's the dental stone and in the weight calcination if you add some chemicals such as calcium chloride or sodium succinate solution then it's a modified alpha hemihydrate or a modified dye stone so talking about the microstructure the dental stone okay just imagine that stones are stiff right so obviously the gypsum particles are uh, present in the form of rods or prisms such that they are compactly arranged and this forms that the dental stone has a tough nature right but the dental plaster as i had shown in your earlier pictures the plaster is composed of particles that are not compactly arranged like that of stone but they are loosely arranged and they are spongy in nature right so the particles are irregular in shape unlike that of dental stone and are porous in uh, form so similarly the modified alpha hemihydrate has the composition similar to dental stone but the particles are shorter and thicker or the crystals let's say are shorter and thicker which makes the modified alpha hemihydrate strongest and then dental stone and then the least strong chemical structure is of dental plaster according to the american dental association specification number 25 the products of gypsum or gypsum products can be classified into five basic types which are Type 1 impression plaster, type 2 model plaster, type 3 dental stone, type 4 dental stone high strength low expansion, type 5 dental stone high strength and high expansion. We'll be talking about the uses in dentistry in later parts of the video. So we have the gypsum product that is usually available in packets and is in powder form. Now we pour the gypsum powder onto a bowl and add some water. Then we mix the gypsum product to prepare a mixture of a consistency according to our requirement purposes. First of all, we select the type of gypsum product. Based on the desired properties and application, for example, for the fabrication of cast or models, it can be done using type 2 or type 3 plaster. But for investment purpose, we use type 5 dental gypsum product, which has high strength and high expansion. So the first step is selection of the type of gypsum product. For proportioning, 
the recommended water powder ratio should be used and it varies according to the product as shown in this table. The greater is the water powder ratio means that obviously the water is more than the powder, right? So the less is the dry strength of the set material when the water powder ratio is more. Now if you carefully look at the water powder values, it is lowest for type 5 material. Now recall what the product 5 or the gypsum product type 5 had its name. Then this stone, high strength and high expansion, right? So obviously when the water powder ratio is less, the dry strength is more. Now I hope you guys are really clear about this concept now. So for accuracy, water should be measured using accurate graduated cylinder and the powder should be weighed using a weight balance. The powder should not be measured by volume just like that of water because the powder does not pack uniformly and, and hence the pre-weight sachets are used as they promote accuracy, reduce waste and save time. So our third and the final step in the manipulation or the mixing of gypsum product is mixing and pouring. A measured amount of water is placed in a bowl and a weight powder is shifted into the water with the help of a spatula. Okay, so I haven't talked about the materials or the armamentarium re uh, required for the manipulation but let me tell you that there will be a next video on it. Now after putting the powder particles onto the water, it's allowed to settle for 30 seconds to minimize air entrapment so that there are no porosities or hollow spaces that make the resultant cast weak. The mixture is then vigorously stirred with a periodic wiping of the inside of the ball with the spatula to ensure wetting of all the powder and breaking of any lumps of the powder particles. Continue the mixing until a smooth mix is obtained and spatulation usually completes within a minute. After mixing, vibrator is used to reduce in air entrapment. Mechanical mixing on the vacuum is usually preferred because strength and hardness is more than that obtained by hand mixing. Since there is less chance of air entrapment and all the powder particles are evenly weighted by water. Now after the mixing is done, and we have finally achieved a consistency as we desired, which is a creamy consistency most commonly used in dentistry. We pour the mixture onto an impression to produce a cast or a jar which is used for investing. Or we can also use the mix to attach cast onto an articulator as you can see in this picture. Don't worry much, you'll understand everything once you get started actually working with the materials. The various types of gypsum products has variable use in dentistry. The first or the type 1 as the name itself suggests is used in making impressions in oral cavity. Since the material cannot be reused once the mixture is set and the re reaction is slow which makes it slow for the mixture to set and the reaction is an exothermic one, it might cause oral tissue injury to the patient while impression making. So the use of this type is quite narrowed down nowadays and we use other materials for impression making. Type 2 is the model blaster. It has adequate strength and it's used to make working cast and models for sturdy purposes. But its main use is to fill a flask during denture fabrication. And it's usually white in color as you can appreciate in the figure. Type 3 stones are preferred for making cast, usually called as a master cast. And the master cast are used to process dentures because the stone has enough strength for this purpose and the denture is easier to remove after processing. Type 4, also called as a dye stone, is used in the fabrication of dyes. The principal requisite for a dye material are strength, hardness and minimal sitting expansion. So to obtain these properties, modified alpha hemihydrate particles are used. This material is also called as the dye stone as I had already mentioned or the type 4 dental gypsum product. A hard surface is necessary for a dye stone because the tooth preparation is covered with wax as you can see in that bluish material 
and the bluish material is a wax and the wax is carved to make it resemble the actual tooth structure and it should flush with the margins of the die and for this purpose we use a sharp instrument for carving of the wax therefore the die stone upon which the wax is laid must be resistant to abrasion later this wax is melted and a metal comes in place of this wax and hence a dental appliance such as crown is made by replicating the outline of the tooth the type 5 gypsum product exhibits even higher compressive strength than the type 4 dental stone and the improved strength is attained by making it possible to lower the water powder ratio even further than those used for type 4 material as i had already mentioned earlier the type 5 material is used as an investment material and we need a high strength because you obtain a hollow space or a mold of an object which is placed inside and then surrounded by a gypsum product. So yes, we have that mold into which a metallic alloy in molten form is placed for the fabrication of metal crowns mostly and this process is called as casting. Depending upon whether you want a silver crown, zirconia crown or a gold crown. So you use various metals which are in the molten form. And when the metals set, they shrink. Or let's say when the alloy solidifies, it shrinks. And along with the shrinkage of the metal, the mold cavity also shrinks. And hence there is a chance for the investment too to shrink, right? So we desire a material with high expansion which will expand and compensate the shrinkage of the metal and the mold space. And also a high strength because we don't want our investment material to crack, right? So hence the type 5 or the dental stone with high strength and high expansion is used. So yes, that's all about the uses of various gypsum products in dentistry. I hope the examples were a bit clear you to you guys but as i told you earlier as you keep working with the materials later in your bds you'll be more clear about it about the materials and all the procedures so don't worry much about it and this video is just for the basic concepts on the gypsum products so i hope this was helpful to you all and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and leave a subscription down below keep supporting and keep loving Made it, made it for you.